Hey coders, how's it going? Hope you guys are doing well. Chris here with episode four of how to build a shopping app. In the previous lesson, we had set up CocoaPods, set up our Xcode project, and initialized the Molten SDK with our store ID. In today's video, we're actually going to make some API calls and retrieve the products that we have set up in our Molten store. So now as we're digging deeper into the Xcode project, it's a good time to mention that I'm actually mirroring this Xcode demo from one of Molten's blog posts by Dylan McKee. And I will put the link in the description below. So if you ever want a written reference for this demo, you can come here. And we're about right here, listing products. If you want to see what the next couple of videos are going to be about, you can even scroll down further and read the rest of the document. So going back to our Xcode project, the first thing we're going to do is run the app. And it looks like we've done nothing now. Uh, it's empty. But you can see that this master detail Xcode project already comes with a table view. Furthermore, it comes with this edit and plus button, which is going to allow us to edit the rows and add new rows. But we don't actually need those two things, so we'll go ahead and remove those soon. But going back to the Xcode project in the master view controller.swift, I want to point out a couple of things. Namely that we do have a table view already set up so that all we need to do is plug in the data and implement the table view delegate methods to display the table cells. And furthermore, the table data is going to be stored in this objects property and it's an array of type any object. So that's important to note because when we make the API call to retrieve our molten store products, we're going to assign those products to the objects array. And then later on when the table view asks us for the cell data, we're going to be accessing this objects array to return that cell data as well. Okay, so first of all, let's review what we have in the view did load. So far, the only code we added was this set public ID method call, which is going to initialize the SDK for use. So what I'm going to do here now is remove the edit button, which is this line of code that adds it, and then also this add button. So we're going to remove these two lines, which assigns that add button to the upper right corner. So underneath this split view setup code, I'm going to create a little space, but this is still within the view did load method. And I'm going to make a call to retrieve the store products. And what we're going to do is we're going to type in molten dot shared instance. And this is going to give us the singleton instance that we initialized up here. And we're going to call a method dot product dot listing with parameters. And this is going to return all of our products. For the actual parameters, we're going to put nil because we want all of them. And for the success handler and the failure handler, all you need to do is just double click that. It's going to expand it. And you can see in the response, there's a single parameter that is a dictionary of NS object where that's the key and the value is any object. So we're just going to call this response and keep in mind that it's a dictionary. Maybe we'll just name it response dictionary in case, in case we forget. For failure, let's double click that to open it again. This response has two parameters. One is a dictionary and another one is an error parameter. So here we're going to call this again response dictionary an error like that. If an error happens, we're just going to print out a message to the console right now. So something like something went wrong. And let's set a breakpoint there in case it hits that point and then we can worry about it and we can debug the error. For the code inside a successful response, what we're going to do is grab our product data from the response dictionary. Now, how do we know what's contained inside that dictionary? Well, now would be a good time to look at the Molten API guide or a reference document. So if we go back to the homepage and you scroll all the way down, you can look at API reference and click under products and look at this call, get products by criteria. And then you can look at the successful response. Now, first of all, how do I know that this is the API call that this method is making. 
listing with parameters. Well, let me run it right now. And I'm not doing anything with the successful response because we haven't written any code here. So it's just going to make this call. So when I launched it, view did load gets called, our molten singleton object gets initialized, and we make this call listing with parameters. If you look in the console, it tells you exactly what call is being made. So you see right there, slash products, and that corresponds to this one, get products by criteria. So if you take a look at the right side here, that's an example of a successful response from making that call. This response right here is expressed in JSON. Now, if you're a student of my beginner course, you're going to understand what JSON is and how to work with JSON and how to read this. But if you're not a student of the course and you haven't worked with JSON before, let me just take a quick minute to explain to you what it is. So all it is is a data format. When Swift interprets the JSON, all it sees are dictionaries and arrays. And all a dictionary is, is a collection of key value pairs. So let me show you an example. By opening a set of curly brackets like this, this would be a dictionary. And a key value pair could be something like key, colon, and then a value. And each pair is separated by a comma. And here's an example of a key where the value is an array. So here we use a square bracket uh, and it would be something like value comma value comma value and this would be an array of three objects where it can be retrieved by this key so then we write comma to do another key value pair and the thing is things can become nested so you can have something like key colon and then as the value you can have another dictionary and inside this dictionary would be a whole new set of key value pairs. So something like A, you know, colon, value, comma, B, colon, value. It may seem a little confusing at first, but once you understand it and you get used to reading it, uh, you can understand how Swift is going to interpret it. So it's going to see this as a dictionary. It's going to see each of these as a key value pair. And right now I have all the keys as the same type of object, but in reality, each of the keys would be different like that because the key is used to retrieve the value. So if we look back at the successful example response, you can see that the top level is a dictionary because it's a curly bracket. So Swift is going to treat this whole response as a dictionary. Here's a key value pair. Status is the key and this Boolean true is the value comma, the second key value pair is the key is result and the value is an array because it's a square bracket of all of these product objects. You can see that each value of that array is a dictionary in itself. So here's one of the products, right, comma, that separates each item in the array. And then this one is another dictionary which represents the product and, you know, it's got all of this product data as key value pairs. So what we really need out of this response dictionary is this stuff. So we're going to be calling the result key to retrieve the array of product data. And in that array of products, each product is represented as a dictionary itself. Okay, might be confusing for you, but it's all going to make sense when we type it out in code. So here, this response dictionary, we're going to say self dot objects because remember that's the array where we're going to store the objects for the table view equals response dictionary and we're going to retrieve the result key the value we're going to cast it as a type of any object an array of any object because remember the value for the key result is an array of all of these objects but we're going to put any object here and not as a dictionary because that's the type that this is declared in okay so now we have the array of products in the self dot objects property so assign products array to our objects property and furthermore we're going to tell the table view to reload its data and we do that by typing reload data and that's going to tell the table view that we have new data and for it to request 
the data from us again. So because we created this Xcode project as a master detail, when the project's created, we already had a table view connected to this self.tableView property. And furthermore, we already have the table view delegate methods if you scroll a little farther down. This is the method that we're interested in right now, cell for row at index path. And right here, it's pre-filled a little bit of the code. So it says, let object equal the objects array index path dot row. This represents the row that the table view is asking us for right now. And it's casting it as an NS date, which is not something that we want because our objects array contains an any object, which we know are actually these product dictionaries right here. Okay, so we're going to go back and we're going to cast this instead as a dictionary where the key is a string and the value is any object. So if you're unfamiliar with how a table view works, we've been working with it in a couple of the demos on this YouTube channel, but essentially when the table view asks this view controller for data, it's going to call cell for row at index path for every single row in the table view. And this index path parameter is going to tell us what row it's asking for. So that's why we pass an index path dot row into our objects array to get the object that we should be representing for this row. Um, and then we're going to set the label as the object. So if we take a look at this product, what a single product is, that's right here all the way down to right here. That's a single product. And we can see that it has a key value pair for the title, right? Where the key is title and the value is whatever the title is from the store, from our actual Molten store. So we're going to say object title. Okay, and we're going to try to cast this as a string. So we're going to write as question mark string. And if it fails, it's going to turn into nil. And that's going to be harmless when we try to set it to the text property of the label. Okay, so now we can run it. So let's see what we get. So it's doing its thing and there we go. It's retrieved the three products we added in the previous lesson to our Molten store. And those are the actual titles of the products. Now, if you click it right now, it's going to crash because by default, the master detail template handles the tapping of that table view. And it's going to try to transition us to a detail view controller, which we're going to need in the next lesson. However, in this prepare for segue method, it's trying to cast that that product object as a date, right? So for now, I'm just going to comment out this line and comment out this line because that's going to cause a crash. In the next lesson, we're actually going to work on this method and we're going to transition to the detail view so that we can see the product details. But for now, let me run it again. We have successfully retrieved the products from our Molten store by making a simple API call like this. So I thank you for watching. Please share the video if you found it useful and please subscribe to get notified of new videos. I'll see you guys tomorrow where we're going to create the product detail page. All right, talk to you guys later, bye. <laughs>